Welcome to Florence, the cradle of the Italian Renaissance, and as it turns out, the birthplace of Italian luxury. In this episode, we'll shop like a Medici and see how the culture of pleasure and beauty that flowered in their city during the Renaissance is kept alive by Florentine artisans. We'll visit the laboratorios and bottegas of Florence's most revered shoemakers, bespoke tailors, watchmakers, and custom jewelers. We'll find time as well to feast like the Medici family in a special spot overlooking their city and try the famous Florentine specialty that was invented for the Grand Duke of Tuscany. So join us, I'm David Saldran, and this is Executive Class. Florence is where the Renaissance was born, and the still visible works of its famous artists and architects remind us of the city's special role in history. Under the rule of the powerful Medicis, Florence was a center of the European luxury industry, a city brimming with artisans, inventors, chefs, goldsmiths and tailors, all of whom channeled the newfound confidence and creativity of the Renaissance spirit to produce the articles of beauty desired by the wealthy Florentine merchant families. Though Renaissance greats like Brunelleschi, Michelangelo, and Da Vinci are long gone, many of the old artisan families have remained, including new generations of craftsmen who continue to thrive in the city. The workshop of Roberto Ugolini, acknowledged to be one of the best Florentine shoemakers, if not one of the best Italian shoemakers, is so small it's easy to miss. But in a way, that's a metaphor. This is a man who prefers quality over quantity, and we're about to meet the legend in person. Ugolini's tiny bottega in Florence's quaint Oltrano district is not quite what you'd expect from one of Italy's greatest living shoemakers. Unexpected too is seeing the living legend at work in plain view. Clearly, Roberto Ugolini is a shoemaker through and through a craftsman of the old school, who's more comfortable making rather than marketing his shoes. With Ugolini's global success, you'd think he'd splurge on a fancy shop in a fashionable address. But none of that for this former cobbler turned bespoke shoemaker to A-list clients the world over. The space is dedicated entirely to his craft, half the floor just for his workbench, and just enough seats for him and his apprentices. Walking clients, stand at a counter. The only mechanical machine he uses takes up most of the space of his backroom office. Every other inch of space is occupied by his tools, the wooden lasts of his clients, and the dozens of pairs of sampled bespoke shoes. Because of your reputation, it's easy to expand, it's easy to grow, it's easy to, to hire more, more staff, more people to work on, 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 the, on the shoes that, that you craft. But you prefer to remain small. I'm quite surprised mm, walking yeah. in here. Like, yeah. this is it? Wow, really small. Yeah. For, to, for to expand the one work like this, to make the shoes like this, uh, the, the first thing is to have uh, the people work well the, by hand. I can open another kind of shop, du double of here, of three, of he three times of here. But if uh, the production is the same of here, there's no sense. A perfectionist, he'd rather make every pair and supervise the work of his small team of craftsmen himself. You can be sure then, each pair that carries his name is designed, assembled, and finished by hand, and gosh, boxed by Ugolini himself sometimes. It's not that different from the shoes artisans made for Florentine aristocrats during the Renaissance. Each pair is made specifically for you, you alone, built around a last that's an exact copy of your foot with a shape, construction, and design you pick yourself, from the classic model to the famous Ugolini house style. This kind of shape is uh, very typical of me. This is my... It's, 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 it's a long... Yeah, uh, yeah, shape. this one, yeah. Ugolini has the most number of shoe models of any bespoke shoemaker I've come across, though he's often frustrated 
that a lot of his clients don't take advantage of his unique creativity and expertise. This is uh, one model like this or like this is like a joke for for we for the, for me for him for the shop because if I think how many people choose one model like this probably two or three in the year yeah. no more this is particular but it's a piece of I art. think uh, if the customer when I have two three four pair I think I go for it right take this go all the way <laughs> yeah you have a classic okay now go choose one like this go with wow. something that only one Roberto Ugo yeah but I know it's not easy. It's nice. Another, another, another. Uh, is a is this one? This is new model make uh, some months ago. This is like it's a particular. Snake yeah. Snake skin. What is it? Yeah. This is uh, Kalusha. Yeah. Uh, but customer don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> they prefer all these ones. It's not easy to see. Don't, we don't take many of them because it's particular. Yeah. But what Roberto is saying here is you only have one chance to have that one bespoke shoe made by him. Go, go all the way, go for it. <laughs> Use your imagination, be creative, because he can do it. He can yeah. create it. Yeah. He can think it, he can create it. Ugolini, whether he cares or not, is a genuine Florentine treasure. And like that other genius from Tuscany, Leonardo da Vinci, combines art and science to craft shoes for modern-day Medici's. Italian men are known for being very fashionable, but every region has its own particular style. Florence, for example, would have a Florentine style, a Florentine silhouette, a Florentine tradition of making suits. And Liverano in Liverano is one of those suit makers that makes the perfect Florentine suit. Like Ugolini, Antonio Liverano of the Liverano and Liverano Bespoke Tailoring House is a living Florentine legend. And like the famous shoemaker across the Arno River, Liverano spends most of his time at work in his Via dei Fossi atelier. Antonio Liverano began tailoring at the age of 11 when he joined his older brother, Luigi's shop in Florence. Now 82, he's still at his cutting table six days a week, at least when he's not attending a trunk show overseas. Florence and tailoring are a natural fit. The city first grew wealthy from its trade in wool and silk. During the Renaissance, the Florentines were among the best-dressed Europeans, and the city home did most tailors on the continent. Tailored suits have replaced the capes and doublets of the 16th century, but the need to exude prestige effortlessly is still ingrained in the social fabric. and appears in every Liverano jacket, inspired by the classic Florentine style. Allora, il nostro lavoro della scuola fiorentina, poi ognuno si è creato il proprio stile, no? Ma le basi sono quelle di avere un capo morbido, no? Come dico io, una seconda pelle. Quindi un addosso deve avere il vestito, ma non deve sentirselo addosso, non deve pesare. Deve, deve giocare, deve guidare, deve lavorare col vestito, senza problemi. Quello è il nostro concetto, il mio concetto, quello di... Di avere il vestito, la giacca. The Liverano house cut is typically Florentine, with soft, sloped, unpadded shoulders. But Liverano improvises somewhat, with a three buttonhole, cutaway, or open quarters jacket style fastened mid button to accentuate the chest. Anche quello è un particolare che io ho con gli anni, creando il mio stile, l'ho accentuato, perché non è così accentuato la rotondità, no? Anche quello è un particolare che faccio io, poi qualcuno mi copia, però. And like the tailors we met in Milan, Antonio Liverano prefers to work with vintage fabrics. His collection is among the largest in Florence. He says the stiffer, weightier fabrics woven before the 1970s are easier to shape and drape much better than today's ultra lightweight fabrics. I tessuti molto leggeri non sono belli. Non, non a vestire. Clearly, Liverano is a bespoke tailor of the old school. Despite his global success, he keeps a single shop in Florence, sticks to the same house cut, insists on sewing each suit by hand. But no, he's not a slave to the past. His shop sells ready-to-wear clothing and fashion accessories for men. 
he keeps an international staff, and to reach out to overseas clients, he holds trunk shows abroad. The only tailoring tradition he seems to insist on is a Florentine definition of elegance. Un uomo ben vestito è semplicissimo. Deve vestirsi con estrema semplicità. Lui si deve mettere un vestito, una cravatta, una camicia, un paio di scarpe e va a lavorare. Fa quello che deve fare. Deve essere semplicissimo. Non deve perdere tanto tempo a vestirsi. Pensare che cravatta si mette, che camicia, che scarpe, quello non è elegante. Quello, quello elegante è quello che apre l'armadio, prende un vestito, una giacca, si mette addosso un paio di pantaloni, calzini, scarpe, eh? mm, lo sa portare, ecco. Up next, more of our visit to the cradle of the Renaissance and how the spirit of Florentine artisanship is kept alive in the gelaterias and ristorantes, laboratorios and bottegas of the historic Italian city.